So, what's up, YouTube? I, I know this is going to be a good video, <laughs> just because of who put it out. And so I decided to, I'm going to share this with you. We'll watch it together, though, won't we? Let's, let's see what we got here. So many of us, we wake up every day in fear. We're scared. And we are so frightened to leave the box. We work in a box. We drive to the office in a box. We eat lunch out of a box. We go home and live in a box. We spend five hours every night watching a box. And then we die in a box. And we call it a life. And my intent, my passion, my promise to you is to remind you you're not supposed to live your life in a box and die in a box. Nope. And to remind you, don't believe that mass thinking. Most people are unhappy. You look at the 95% of, of the population, how do they live their lives? Let me ask you, whether it is in Lebanon or Greece or Lithuania or Texas or Oman or Iraq or India or Sweden or Iceland or Dominican Republic or Sudbury, Ontario or Kenya. In a box. Look at most people out there today. You look at most people, they gossip. They see the worst in humanity versus the best in humanity. You look at most people, they're eating toxic food to medicate themselves because they feel so much deep pain inside over the promise they have betrayed. I'm gonna repeat that again because it's so important. Potential unexpressed turns to pain, my friend. Potential unexpressed turns to pain. The potential you were born into your potential to do art in your work, your potential to be a craftsperson in your field, your potential to be super fit this year, your potential to be fearless, your potential to deal with adversity with a smile in your face and gratitude in your heart. That's who you are. And if you betrayed that potential, because you forgot who you are, you've picked up all of these negative thoughts, you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people, you've adopted these negative rituals every day and these negative habits. Well, you know, that potential you were born into, that white tablet. It's easy to get overwhelmed when someone you love is in distress. Sometimes a Unless you're Ed. will turn to pain because the deepest part of you, call it your subconscious mind, call it your deeper instinct, call it your best self is witnessing everything you're doing and that potential turns to pain and that's why people eat the wrong food it's comfort food yeah it's comfort food but it actually makes you feel worse the next morning why do so many people watch the news every night or mindless tv shows or spend hours on the social media trolling making fun of other people it's because deep inside they're in pain and for those few temporary moments where they're tearing people down or eating the wrong food or drinking too much or causing other people pain, they get a quick, short burst of adrenaline. And it's a quick high. But the next morning they wake up and there's even more pain. I just want to say... From the moment you were born... I just want to say I had no idea what this video was about when I turned it on. Okay, this is the shit that, that, this is, this is my, like, my life, okay? Everything is a coincidence. Everything is like, is like it was meant to happen. It, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. Every T.I. knows what I'm talking about. But it, at some point, the, you people that are, that are doing nothing but watching T.I.'s all day. You're watching targeted individuals, but you, but you claim you don't believe it. But deep down, you know you do. You know you do. When are you going to just just take the step? When are you just going to take that leap, the leap of faith, out of the box that you're living in? And, and then you get to experience, you know, life, like, free from the slavery that you've put yourself in. You start picking up the messaging of mass thinking. You start re receiving this sort of hypnosis from the world around you. If your mom is scared of money because she has money issues, she will say money doesn't grow on trees, even though she's well-intentioned. She's your mom. If your dad has been burned by people, your dad will say, be really careful, do not trust people. 
You get into school. What do your teachers tell you? Dress like everyone else. Think like everyone else. Don't laugh too loud. Don't be creative. Geniuses are cut from a different cloth. Don't think too big. Play small. What happens then you start making friends and your friends start laughing at your dreams. And then people around you, and then society and the media starts giving you this mass thinking that you know what, resign yourself to average. Spend the best years of your life watching television in a subdivision. You can't be healthy like an athlete. Resign yourself to mediocrity is the message that mass thinking gives you your entire life. And then don't be surprised if you end up and you're 20 years old right now, or you're 35, or you're 55, or you're 85, and you have programmed yourself at such a deep level by daily repetition from the world around you to disbelieve in yourself, to disbelieve in your genius, to disbelieve in your dreams, to disbelieve in your ability to have natural health. Natural health. And so I believe that's the story of life that 95% of the people have adopted this mass thinking and it's so subtle and it's come from your environment around you. Boom. You know, one of my favorite movies is The Matrix. And The Matrix sort of talks about this. It's the world has pulled the wool over your eyes. You know, if you buy into the mass thinking and you behave like the normal people, <laughs> normal people living like the 95%, like I said, they watch news, they are addicted to it, they gossip. Poor thing. I'm not being negative here, I'm just reporting. You look at most people, watch most people. They gossip, they see the worst in people, Sad. they eat the wrong food, they don't work out, they're not, they're, they're giving away their power and they're resigning themselves to being a victim. And then they're trying to bring the successful people down because it's too scary for them to look in the mirror and say, why am I not a success? Why am I miserable? What changes do I have to make? How, how can I leave the safe harbor and go into the unknown, which is where my possibility lives, but I'm gonna to have to go through the discomfort and the disruption to get there. No, that takes bravery. It takes courage. So what does the 95% do? They see someone who is playing at world class or making their ascent to the A game and they laugh at you, and they criticize you, and they try to hurt you. And actually, if you really want to play at world class like a Mandela or a Gandhi, you will so leave the mass thinking and stand for such nobility that they will try to kill you. You will threaten them so much if you want to play at the level of the greatest of humanity and you stand for honor, honesty, love, decency. If you go out there and live at that highest level of the greatest women and men, they will try to kill you because you are disrupting mass humanity so much. Crazy, now, right? I'm not saying you have to be a Gandhi or a Mandela or a Mother Teresa or a Martin Luther King Jr., the people who move my heart, but you can be a great entrepreneur, great filmmaker. This year can be the year you get to the best fitness of your life. This year can be the year you get to financial freedom. This year can be the year you make the dreams you had as a kid come true. Will you take action? Will you do your part? And will you be willing to be misunderstood and laughed at? Because as you leave the 95% and you do the things that I teach, you will be called strange, you will be called weird, you will be called abnormal, you will be so misunderstood. In my life, most people don't understand me. Why do you get up at five o'clock? Why do you do nature walks? Why do you keep journals? Why do you continually want to improve everything that you touch? Why do you work so hard? Why do you show so much love to the people you love? Why do you eat those foods? Why do you take those vitamins? Why do you drink that green tea? Why do you read those books? Why do you speak the way you do? Why don't you watch television? Why don't you watch news? Why do you avoid toxic people? I am misunderstood. Weird is the price people committed to world-class pay to deliver on their potential. And so what I'm suggesting to you is simply this, masterpieces are never urgent. And we live in a world that celebrates urgency. We want to build a great company or a great life or a great mindset or a great family or a great fortune. And we want it now. We want it yesterday. And yet, you know, the 5% understand that patience really is a virtue. Boom. All was, of the great performers God. 
in can't. music, sports, science, business, life, have one thing in common. You can't make this shit up. 2.44 hours of practice for 10 years. And I call it 10 years of anonymous. You see, you look at the Richard Bransons, and you look at the Federers, and you look at the Jordans, you look at the, the Jay-Z's, you look at the Madonnas, and what do you find? You find that they spent many years of iteration and focus and training before the world saw them as world class. So for you, remember small daily acts of practice, small daily acts of op optimization, 10 years of quiet training towards your mountaintop, let's say to be the master of your field, is what it takes according to the science to get to world class. And then we see a Jay-Z or we see a Kanye or we see a, a Federer or we see a great boxer. And we can drink and of Fiji course, water. In 10 years, 2.44 hours a day, all you're doing is practicing monomaniacally your one thing. Of course, after 10,000 hours, you're gonna get to a place where when people watch you in action, they're gonna call you a genius. The geniuses that we pedestal as divinely blessed are not divinely blessed. Hmm, hmm. They're people next door who did different things. Boom. All right. I, I swear to God, I swear on my kids, I swear to everything. This is the first time I've ever done that. I just, I just pulled up a video and decided, you know what? This is gonna be important. I'm going to share it, and then this is the first time I've ever done that, okay? I, usually I'll watch something, and then I'll, I'll resonate with it, and I'll, you know, I'll go back, and I'll share it. But something, something told me to do this. Something, I, I don't know what that something is. I, I don't have all the answers. But at, at what point do you, uh, naysayers and you, uh, reality deniers, whatever you want to call Whatever, you guys, when are you going to wake up and smell the roses? When are you going to stop following, you know, the mainstream and start paying attention to the, the people? Like, like, I have this curse, right? And people get mad about it, but I have this curse whenever I, I say that, you know, I'm always right. I'm not always right, obviously, but when I say that I have this curse and, and I'm, you know, I'm always right. I end up being right, you know, like every time. Every time I say that, every time I have that feeling of, you know, where, where I have an idea or about anything, anything at all, and I say, you know, I have this curse, you know, I'm always, always being right. I've never been wrong when I say that. Of course, you know, I say some things and, and I've made mistakes and I have no problem admitting my mistakes. It happens. We're human, right? We are human. But this had so many little synchronicities in it. I, I, I'm still just kind of blown away. The main thing that you should take from this is patience is a virtue. And I should show you, I should show you this message. I just sent this message to my brother the other day. And you know what? He probably thinks that there's some deeper meaning to it and that I have that I'm up to something. But the truth is, there's absolutely nothing at all. I just felt like I needed to send him this message. Let me show you. Here. I don't care, I'll show you. Let's see here. Here it is. Patience is truly a virtue. Just remember that I said that I didn't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. Now, I was trying to kickstart his mind, you know, trying to get him to, to think, you know, I guess using fear, trying to get him to be afraid to, to do these stupid little shit that he's doing, right? Trying to make him think, you know, you know, well, what the hell, what the hell has he got up his sleeve? Oh no, I, I better just back off, I better stop fucking with them, right? So that's that's the truth. That's the honest God truth. That's there was no meaning behind it, but I sent him that message. Patience is truly a virtue, right? And then you heard it in this video. I mean and just everything that the video talked about, right? You can't you really you can't make this shit up. 
it, it, it didn't show up in my feed either. I just, for some reason, I was, was looking around and I found a, like a second channel that Anonymous had on here. I'd never seen anything on that channel. I wasn't subscribed. I just subscribed to it. And this is the first video I watched. What are, you know, what are the odds of all that? This is the first time I ever watched that video. So, yeah, coincidence. Sure, sure. It's coincidence. Another coincidence. Now, I'm not lying to you when I tell you that my life is full of those coincidences. Constantly. All day, every day. That's all it is. Right? So, yeah. I, I do think that there is an aspect to this targeting that is the government. Of course, there's people making choices that are choosing to do certain things, you know, the gang stalking shit. But what's making them, what, what is guiding them to, to do that? What's, what's pushing them to make that choice, right? There is a puppet master behind the scenes. There is a force. There is something. There's a higher power. There's people playing with our minds right now, Right? I think Dr. DeFacto kind of talked about this in his last video, um, which, he, you know, he talked about the demonic hive mind, right? And it made a lot of sense. It, it really did make a lot of sense. So I don't think this is the targeting, okay? We'll go back to the targeting. I don't think that the targeting is just spiritual. I think the government's absolutely involved. But I don't think it's just government trying to get you to on the you know to think it's oh it's jesus and it's this and it's aliens i don't think that either why can't it be a combination of everything it's all connected it's absolutely all connected and i don't see enough people pointing that out dr defacto has talked about it in his last video and i'm not just like stealing his idea i've been saying the same thing for a while there's, there's people that, that can attest to this. I've been saying the same thing for a long time. All right? The people that are making the, the decisions to gang stalk or do that, of course, they don't know that they're, you know, being controlled to do that. It's a, it's a really tough thing to accept that somebody's using you. Somebody's, somebody's, you know, influencing your decisions, right? No, you want to believe that you're in control of your mind, right? You'd, you'd like to, everybody would love to think that, that they're in control of their own mind. Nobody's controlling them. Nobody's controlling me. I, I make my own decisions. Yeah. Sure you do. Sure you do. You keep telling yourself that while you keep making the wrong decisions. Okay? Whenever you wake up every day and, and you're excited to see what, what the fuck can you see next, what, what coincidences or synchronicities or crazy shit you're going to see the next, then come talk to me. All right? But until then, when you wake up every day and all you have in your head is, oh, I got to see, I got to see what comments are about me or said about me. And I got to see, and then you go in and you start your trolling and you start that stupid shit. You really think that you're in control of your mind. Do you really think that you're in control of your mind? Do you really think that's the best thing that you should be doing for, you, for yourself right now? That's, you, you think that you wanted to do that and that's why you do, you're doing that? You really think so? Come on. Okay, it's, it's maybe it's funny for a minute. But at what point do you wake up and realize you wasted your whole fucking life trolling people online? And then you and you have no friends, you burn all your bridges because the people, the puppet masters have been successful with you controlling your fucking dumbass. And I don't mean to resort to name calling, but it it's it is what it is. You can't fix stupid, you know. Simple, simple things amuse simple people. As simple as that. Here I am trying to help them. Trying to help people. But, hey, that's all right. I believe that's what TIs are here for. That's what we're doing. We're here to show you the way. We're here to show you there's a better way, right? We're here to take it and turn the other cheek. Like what? Like Jesus Christ did, right? He turned the other cheek. Thank you, sir. May I have another? All right? Kill him with kindness. You know? And people hate that. I mean, that's worse than anything. When you can laugh in their face at something that, that there was meant to hurt you or to hurt your feelings. 
like 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 Donovan, you know. Oh, he's triggered. He's so triggered. He's so mad. He's he's pounding his fist on the table, mad. <laughs> and that's and I I can laugh at that because I'm sitting here laughing, and he it, he's I don't know how he sees that as mad, but hey, whatever. And everybody has their own perspectives, I guess. But uh, but at some point, you know, the the student has to graduate, right? You know, when does the student uh, become the teacher? At what point? Because right now, it I feel like I'm just banging my head off a wall, you know? It feels like I'm just saying, repeating myself, saying the same thing over and over again because my the students won't, they won't get it. They just don't get it. It's like um, obsessive, obsessive defiant disorder, you know? You tell them to do something and they do the opposite or you tell them not to do something and you can be damn sure they're going to do that thing that you told them not to do. They're like children. You know, they know not what they do. <clears throat> but so, at some point, you have to teach the children that they have to be responsible for their actions, right? They have to, to, to be responsible. You have to be able to accept your accountability for your actions and not blame others, right? Don't blame other people for your for your the problems that you have in life, they're a result of your choices. That's it, plain and simple. Yeah, so so I walked down, down the street and got mugged, right? I can blame that person for mugging me all my life, right? But that's not going to help anything. What did I learn? I learned not to go down that street anymore, right? And I can I can look at it like like I'm a dumbass for going down that street, you know? That's my own dumb fault. I shouldn't I should have known better, right? I should have I could have made choices to that would have you know resulted in that not happening, right? I could have thought about it and made the right choice and walked down the main street that was lit up and that wouldn't have happened, right? I'm not going to live my life just blaming that other person. Because they mugged me and, and then I'm broke. And then because, because of that, I lost my job. And because of that, I, my marriage fell apart. And because of that, uh, now I'm 200 pounds overweight and then I have heart problems and blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on, right? The narcissistic, right? That narcissistic uh, abuse excuse that you like to use. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why he sees it this way. But a certain a certain person thinks that everybody has abused him, everybody has wronged him, everybody has has led him astray, right? And abandoned him, and then abandoned him in his life, and now and then so I guess the position he's in right now, he's is everybody else's fault, right? Because they they put a gun to his head and told him, This is what the choice you have to make. You know, you're not free to make your own choices. This is what, <laughs> so uh, I guess, you know, it's everybody else's fault. You know, that's not, that's not any way to live. The, you will not, never control your own mind. You will never control your own reality. If you are constantly going to blame someone else for your problems. It's really, really simple. You know, shit happens deal with it as as simple as that people are dicks shit happens but what could you do differently right what can you do to change it what could you have done differently you know maybe you could have trolled that person less right or maybe you know in trolling them that's fine but maybe you took one day just one day to actually talk to that person like a human being right and then that one time you did that you ended up just learning that the one thing that that changed your life right good think it's corny i don't care this is what my life is every day all day every day these little things something stuck with me that i don't i i'd like to know where this came from because I, i'm i'm just curious um my brother made the comment that I'm, I'm really good at, at looking stuff up. That's what he said. He said, I'm really good at looking stuff up. Like, what did you, 
What do you mean by that, Ed? I'm curious. Wait, what did you mean by that? What makes you think that I'm really good at looking stuff up? What made you think that? And what evidence do you even have this to to support what you're saying there? I'm just curious why why you said that. What you know? What was your thought process? What makes you think that I'm really good at looking stuff up? Because I don't think I'm very good at looking stuff up at all. I think I'm horrible at looking stuff up. I'm working on on uh, improving my my researching skills, as a matter of fact. Specifically, OSINT. OSINT. You know who's the, the, the OSINT expert on YouTube? But they won't share those skills with the targeted individuals now. OSINT, okay? Operational Security Intelligence or Operation... I think it's Operation... Operational Security Intelligence or something like that. Uh, it's OSINT, okay? OSINT is... The all the the open oh, open source intelligence that's what it is open source intelligence okay it's a group of open source programs that anybody can use but they're used very um, frequently by law enforcement private investigators um, any of the intelligence agencies um, any any type of prof- profession where it uh, a necessity is you know getting information on people you know finding out little details and little pieces of information because information is the difference maker knowledge is power OSINT is what you want to look into Um, look up specifically there's a program called Maltego Maltego M-A-L-T-E-G-O Maltego Maltego but it's it's an all-in-one you learn Maltego okay and Get Maltigo, master it, learn it, watch some tutorials on it, and everything will start making a lot more sense. When, when you do this, you're going to put the pieces of the puzzle together, right? And things are going to start clicking and you're going to start, you're going to start seeing how your gang stalkers are, uh, know what they know, how they, how they're able to do what they're doing, right? And there's lots of other OSINT programs as well. And they're all free. They're all free and open source. So when you learn learn these things, uh, and there's there's one specifically for like Facebook, for Instagram, I mean for everything you can imagine. Okay? If you want to be an expert and on uh, getting information on the internet, that's what you need to do. You need to go and start like yesterday learning OSINT tools okay and like the one i'm working on is maltigo and it has it has everything and so far um i haven't paid a penny and i'm I'm working on right now integrating maltigo osint tool with uh well i'm trying to uh, with chat gpt so i can make it work for me and i can get you know get some time back because i've spent a lot of time on this so when you can automate it, you know, and you can have ChatGPT do the work for you, right? Then uh, you can take your life back. And I'm I'm guessing that that's what Nerve Gorilla does. I'm guessing that Nerve Gorilla has a setup where all he has to do is, is just put the information in once, you know. And his server is set up automatically. He's probably using some AI, right? To automatically alert him anytime, um, anytime a TI uploads something, anytime his name's mentioned, anytime you know any information online comes out about somebody, it's probably gets downloaded right into a little folder form and a little nice little alert on his phone saying, "Hey, hey check this out," you know. I mean, it's it's really not that hard once you learn what they're using and how it works. It just makes a lot of sense. But nobody knew, nobody knows this, okay? I haven't told anybody this. <clears throat> well, with the extent of one person today. But prior to that, I haven't told anybody this. So I'm wondering, Mr. Ed, what made you say uh, that I am good at looking information up on people? Because I'm still waiting for you to answer me and, and uh, help me find the... Um, 
like you helped Conspiracy Underground find the uh, my criminal history report. You said that you uh, you helped showed Conspiracy Underground how to find that criminal criminal background, and that's the one where there was some fake story about me and getting in trouble at a Walmart or something. Yeah, I, I'm still waiting for you to to answer me there. Now, if I'm so good at looking stuff up, wouldn't I be able to find that? Wouldn't I know what, what that's from? I'm asking you, you know. But, like I said, when you ask the right questions and you don't get answers, it tells you everything you need to know, right? So, hopefully uh, hopefully this helped some people. Um, I, I'm sure this will, this will help some TIs out there if you, if you paid attention and you actually do look into the open source intelligence programs that I talked about. Um, but... Specifically, I'm wondering if this helped any of the trolls, if this helped any of the, the gang stalkers. I, I, would like to, I would like to get some feedback. I'd like to know if, don't be, you know, don't be ashamed and don't be shy if, if you were, you know, gang stalking me or you were doing this stupid shit, but you stopped because you, you just, you, you know, you got above that, right? You grew up, let's say. I I don't hold any I don't hold any offense towards anybody. I have no grudge whatsoever. People make mistakes. Um so I don't have anything against people that were gang stalking me at all. As a matter of fact, I'd like to I'd like to hear, you know, what made you what made you decide to stop, you know? I'm just curious. And this we can do this off the record, you know what I mean? If you just knock on my door or something. Or or just Say, hey, what's up? When you see me on the street and say, hey, listen, you know, and just tell me. I, it would stay, I promise, I swear on my kids, it'll stay between us. I just would like to know. My curiosity, I'd like to know what made, what made you guys stop gang stalking me, right? Because it's clear to me that there's a bunch of people just stopped doing this. They were doing it and then they stopped. And I have different theories on it, but I'm curious, you know. <laughs> curiosity killed the cat there, right? So... Um, feel free to leave, leave your comments. What do you think about it? If you disagree, please leave it in the comments. Uh, we, this is a conversation we need to have. So, and if you, if you plan on, um, just being an idiot, trolling and making fun, this just, just do yourself a favor and don't, you know, go, go do that to people that, um, that deserve it, right? People that deserve to be trolled like Donovan, or like Nerve Gorilla, you know, he deserves more trolling than anybody combined on the internet, he called me earlier today, I had him blocked, but of course he called me from an unknown number, and I answered it just to prove a point, I was telling my, my son, I said, oh look, look at the timing, I was talking to my boy, and right at the time, when I get that call, it was, it was like, whenever I would be expecting a distraction, right? And I get the call. I said, watch, I'll answer it, and they'll just hang up, or there won't be anybody on the other line, right? And I answered it, and what do you know? It was Nerve Gorilla, so I wasn't wrong. It absolutely was the gang stalkers calling me, right? It wasn't a normal call. It was somebody calling, I I believe, to distract me. So why did he call? I don't know. He said that um, you, you don't just insult somebody and run away. What are you talking about? That's what you do. Last I talked to him, he blocked me. Didn't even say anything. He just blocked me. I guess he didn't like the the truth that I was t- telling. He didn't like what I had to say. So instead of even acknowledging what I said at all, I double-checked, and, and he clearly could see it. Instead, no, he just blocked me and deleted my chats without saying a word so that if I wouldn't have checked, I would have never known I was even blocked. I'd have just kept typing. And he knows that. But no, he just blocked me. So, why, why are you calling me now? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, you're beating a dead horse, Nerve. You know, your games aren't going to work on me anymore, buddy. You want to, you know, whenever you grow up and you decide that you want to talk um, with dignity and respect... You know, to me, because I'll show you respect and dignity. 
I will just give you back whatever you give, whatever you put out. That's all I do. I'm extremely, one of the easiest guys to get along with. You know, ask anybody. I'm so easy to get along with. There's very, very few people that would say any differently. And those people <laughs> that would say any different, they saw another side. They saw what they put out. You know what I mean? They put out disrespect, right? Or they try to tell me what I am or something. So I just give it right back. I'm, I have no problem doing that. You know, and it's not my fault that you don't like getting it back. You don't like what you, you know, you can dish it out, but you can't take it. That's your problem, not mine. So anyway, anywho, be good or be good at it. Peace out.